Hi, I'm Derek Hatfield, skipper of Spirit of Canada, the new Open 60, uh, slated for the Vendée Globe uh, 2008. We're standing underneath the, uh, the Open 60 right now. We're getting ready to launch this morning. What you're seeing here is a, uh, a full-blown, no-compromise Open 60, all carbon construction, and uh, basically it has a canting keel, twin dagger boards, twin rudders, and very high-tech, very fast. And the boat will do 38 knots. Uh, when it's uh, fully loaded up and, uh, and sailing offshore. Starting at the back of the boat, you have the transom. The boat is 19 feet wide and uh, you have twin rudders. Um, the twin rudders give it great uh, performance from a stability point of view and from steering point of view. Um, each rudder has a hydraulic autopilot attached to it so that uh, off the wind and going at high speeds it has total control. Uh, what you're seeing here is the uh, Canton keel. Uh, this keel is 14 feet down in the water. This is 6,000 pounds of uh, lead bulb and it cants from side to side with a hydraulic ram up inside the boat. And uh, those rams, uh, there's two rams actually, that work as a team and they cant the keel uh, 40 degrees each side. That is the equivalent of having 28 people sitting on the rail of uh, this 18,000 pound boat. And uh, that's of course without having any pe anybody else on board beside myself. Just above the keel there are two dagger boards but uh, they, uh, they're required, um, you use one at a time, and when the keel cants up to windward, of course you lose all the lateral resistance that this fin would provide, and the dagger boards replace that. Uh, it gives you the ability to go upwind when, with these boats. Even though when we're going around the world, most of the time we're going downwind. So both dagger boards would be up inside the boat. The boat has got 22,000 hours of construction into it. Uh, those hours uh, don't include the design uh, time that went into it. Basically, we brought a team from um, around the world, France, New Zealand, Australia, United States, and uh, along with a number of boat builders from Canada and put it together. You're forced to go with a design team that has experience in this class, and there's only about four design teams in the world that have any experience, and uh, that's because uh, each generation of boat is about three to five percent faster than the previous generation, so you're forced to go with, uh, with teams that, uh, or, or design teams that have experience. It's a big budget, $4 million, and uh, you need to focus on uh, getting the boat to the start line. All the skippers say the same thing. The hardest part of these events is getting to the start line, raising the money, finding the sponsors, and getting to the start line. And to give you an, a little idea of what it takes to do this type of a race, um, in the last race around the world, 80 skippers signed up to do the race in 2002. Uh, 50 paid the first installment, 25 paid the second installment, 13 of us qualified and got to the start line, and 10 got to the finish line. The last time it took 182 days to go around the world. Um, next race should be around 87. You see my race number is 84. Uh, I'm telling people that's my goal is to go around the world in 84 days.